Hello everyone, in this video I'll be taking a look at the Ubuntu Unity Remix version 2010 which is codenamed Groovy Gorilla. So rather than going with the usual assortment of officially supported canonical releases, I thought I would change it up a bit this time around with the Ubuntu videos and go for something a little bit different. So go for the more unsupported remixes of Ubuntu and the first one which I've chosen is a Unity. So Unity used to be the default desktop for Ubuntu and it started back in 2011, version 11.04 and there was quite a bit of division about it really. Wow. I suppose you have to say that with a lot of canonical software so far it is very much a division. Do people like it? Do they not? It seems to be very much extreme with canonical software. I was thinking for example with Snaps. But yeah, that was certainly that situation with the Unity desktop. Development of the Unity desktop did continue and it did get rather good towards the end of its life, although some rather extreme decisions were being made by Mark Shuttleworth and Canonical, such as moving the buttons back to the right hand side and forcing them to stay in place, so the close, minimize, and maximize buttons. It's good to see that in this remix they are on the left hand side. In the end, Canonical decided to give up on convergence, and this is what the Unity desktop was being built for, the mobile and desktop interfaces. So with the dream of convergence gone in 2017, they literally gave up on Unity desktop and moved to GNOME. But some people did enjoy using Unity, and obviously some developers have kept it alive. Looking here at the appearance, and yeah, there's quite a few wallpapers included. Good selection there. You can adjust some of the behaviours of the launcher. So it's stuck on the left hand side. You can auto hide it. We can enable workspaces, and that's the multiple desktops there. So yeah, that's that feature. And yeah, you can move the applications between desktops. Did like that implementation. Although, in the end, I find myself just using one desktop, although I've got two monitors here, so that helps things. Uh, we've got the position of where you want to see the menus in the applications. I'm just going to go back to LibreOffice, so yeah, by default, it's a global menu. A layout style which I used to enjoy using, but now I prefer to have the menus within the application window. But yeah, you can move to having it in the title bar instead. So Unity is one of the few desktops that actually has that feature working really well. So if you're really limited on vertical space, such as with laptops and netbooks, then that could actually be a useful feature there. But let's go back to having the global menu. There's more customizations we can do with Compiz. I'll show those later on in the video. But now for some of the downsides. So the situation with Unity 7 is that it's kind of on life support. It's only being developed, well, more like maintained by a small number of developers. And that certainly comes evident when we're finding that features that used to be in Unity are now missing. For example, Firefox used to show a download bar when you're downloading a large file. So if I go and download something now in Firefox, um, oh, wait one moment for it to start. Uh, as you can see, there's nothing special there at all. It, it's just a plain icon. They get an indication of how many windows you have open. So if we just show that. Um, but otherwise, no, you don't have any clue about progress dialogues at all. And it's not just Firefox, it's Dolphin as well. Not Dolphin, <laughs> Nautilus. I'm forgetting which desktop I'm in. I noticed there was a question in the Ubuntu Unity forums, so asking about the Firefox integration, asking about the download bar in particular. Initially the answers were a bit off topic there, but then the answer is here. So they talk about the fact that Unity 7 isn't developed anymore, it's in maintenance mode, and they do want to look at getting things working properly. But I do sort of wonder how big the community is here, especially when I was trying to download the distro on day of release, which like the rest of the Ubuntu releases was yesterday, or the 22nd of October. And when I was downloading it, I was only downloading it from one other seeder. So it was quite slow. I've been seeding it a bit more through the day, but you know, I think I've managed to upload it about 12 gig of the file. At least some of the integration is there. I can right click on Rhythmbox and choose to like play, pause, next and previous. And also 
So with the sound button in the top right hand side, a pause next and previous up there as well. So that was how Unity was. I think I can't remember exactly when that feature came about, but probably thinking at least a couple of years into the lifespan of the desktop. Looking at the shutdown dialog, that was always rather fancy. The alt tab as well. Again, that did look really nice. There was actually some really nice features of this desktop. It did look good. It was shiny. But is it all well and good these days? Uh, not exactly, no. And I'm going to show you some of this point here with the Unity Dash. So searching for applications. Okay, it kind of defeats things when I'm looking at one on the screen there, but looking at Inkscape, yeah, that's fine. Searching for applications is good. Searching for documents, though. Let's go back to default searcher here. So I'm looking at files I have on the system. So I have a program about file types. Sorry, not a program, a document about file types. And I can't see it. So I could say oh, I should be more specific. I should look at just files and folders. And again, I try and search for that. And no, that doesn't appear. So documents only appear when you've opened them. So you can't just search for a document. It has to be a document that you have opened. So yeah, looking back at something I have opened, we can see I've got a couple of those uh, MP3s there at the bottom. So turn the tide. Yeah, searching for that does bring up both the MP3 audio file and the folder it is in. So I could go across to the music scope, but it says there's no music on the computer. You sure? You, you literally brought up that search earlier. So that doesn't work. And it could be that that's just broken, not been fixed yet. But you're wrong in what you're saying there. There are pictures on the computer. Uh, there's both SVG files and PNG files here. So I think some more development work is needed. There's not been an official release of Unity 7 for three years. It's been on life support all this time. And in that time, GNOME has moved along. Yeah, things like Compiz really did enhance the look of the desktop. You can do some really fancy decorations on here. And I suppose it was Compiz that really got me into using Linux in the first place. It looked so much better than Windows XP did at the time. Look back at how the, the desktops were and uh, the speed of Linux at back at this time. This is sort of talking about, I'm talking about like 2009 here. Yeah, this was amazing. But looking at it now, I don't know, I just don't feel the same way about it. I get some of these effects in the KDE desktop and it moves a lot quicker as well. KDE is a lot more responsive these days. I think that's the point I want to make that both GNOME and KDE have advanced quite a bit and even they're going down the convergence route. So we're looking back at what we hated about Unity and you know, it's just the way the modern desktops are going these days. At least the applications are actually opening properly here. This is a snap based application and even the heads up display works. Heads up display in something like Inkscape and GIMP, where you've got all these extensions and filter menus, is really useful. I suppose not really worth looking at the number of applications installed on the system. The, my focus on this was really the desktop. <laughs> Still some uh, discrepancies on some of the icons, but for the most part, it looks all right. Bit of an odd icon size there on VLC. So there used to be things like getting the weather. I think all that's gone, isn't it? I think that's how you used to do it. So, yeah, the weather scope's missing. Now, I do remember this feature about being able to customise the Unity launcher and some of the other settings on the desktop, such as the theming. I wanted to finish the video off in showing how desktops in Linux have progressed since the days of Unity. So I run KDE Plasma on my main system, and I've styled this to look vaguely like Unity. This is the style I really enjoyed using. And I want to point out here with like the document searching. The searcher in KDE has the capability to look at both documents and applications. And this was the file I was looking for, the file called File Permissions. Now I've not opened that at all, yet it's available to search from directly within KDE. So that's already a plus. Doing large file downloads from Firefox or Chrome, 
shows a progress dialog within the icon. So I don't know if you can see it there, but it's a very thin green line. So yeah, that is a feature that is missing in Unity. Multimedia controls. So I've got play, pause, next, and previous. And it also shows the progress of the song while it's playing. So what I can say is most of Ubuntu Unity does work. Some features that used to work no longer do. But at least like the animations look smooth, compies didn't crash at all. So it is usable as desktop. But in my mind, is it as good as the likes of KDE and GNOME have become these days? And I think that is perhaps its downside. That the world has moved on, but it has stayed in a place from three years ago. Well, thanks for watching, and I'll see you all later. Mm -hmm.